Don King, boxing's biggest promoter with the biggest hair, rose to fame after staging the Rumble in the Jungle and the Thriller in Manila. After his work with the likes of Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, Larry Holmes, and Roberto Duran, it's been a while since we heard King shout only in America. Between lawsuits, hijacked trucks, and manslaughter, King hasn't been in the spotlight, but he has been busy. Fun facts about Don King, he's from Cleveland, and he's a murderer. Okay, he technically hasn't been convicted of murder, but he has killed two men. King shot a man who was trying to rob one of his gambling houses. This was ruled a justifiable homicide, so King never served jail time. But when he curb stomped an employee to death because he owed him $600, King didn't get quite so lucky. According to the Washington Post, he literally stomped a man to death on the street, he was convicted of non-negligent manslaughter, and he served four years in prison. His record is clean today, though, because Governor Jim Rhodes pardoned the crime in 1984. Ohio had so completely forgiven him, the Post reported that the city of Cleveland would name a street in King's honor. The very same street where killed a man was proposed to become Don King Way. The city council was split over the idea, and after a lot of bad press, the council decided to keep King's name off of the murder scene. Don King's whole life wasn't just devoted to shady dealings with clients and murder. He really did try to give back to the people in need. In fact, every year, he would give out around 2,000 turkeys for Christmas to poor families near his home in Delray Beach, Florida. But in 2011, his gift of turkeys was foiled by a strange crime. One of his turkey trucks got hijacked. The thief didn't keep all the turkeys to himself or try to sell off the hot birds but abandoned the truck near Pompano Beach. By the time police found the truck, it wasn't clear if the turkeys had been refrigerated properly, so they all had to be thrown out. Why someone would hijack a truck full of turkeys is a mystery, but King has a way of attracting mysterious events in his life. Just because King has encountered some difficult times doesn't mean he lacks high aspirations. He does love the sport of boxing and thought he could put together a fight to really make some change in the world. In 2012, King wanted to put together a bout to unite North and South Korea. Through fighting, may they achieve peace. I plan to bring North Korea and South Korea together. I don't want no East Korea, I don't want no North Korea, I don't want no South Korea, no West Korea, one Korea, you know what I mean? And, and, and this is what I'm fighting for to be able to do. Kim Jong-un now is the chosen, you know what I mean? And on the highway of Pyongyang, you know, you go, you see that bridge, the two women on either side of the bridge, is about bringing, bringing people together with love and understanding. I love Korea and I love the Korean people. And I think that it's time now that they got to recognize and appreciate the fact that they are their brother's keeper. They are each other. So therefore, unify and become one again, as they did in 1953 or 51, when they split, and one went this way, another one that way. So now I want to bring that Korean thing together. I love them, and I want to see Kim Jong-un, and I'm going to work very, very hard to be a peace ambassador. Though one could argue that boxing can be used as a uniting force between cultures, there haven't been a lot of boxing matches that ended in peace treaties, except for at the end of Rocky IV where Rocky clearly solved the US-Soviet Union conflict by beating Ivan Drago. King has yet to get his harangue in Pyongyang, but with the powers of Don King and Kim Jong-un combined, you never know what could happen. King knows that things aren't the best for him right now. He can tell because of his hair. According to Grantland, when asked about his hair, King told a reporter, my hair is God's aura. Everything went up when I got home from the penitentiary. One night I went to lie down next to my wife, and my hair started popping and uncurling all on its own. I knew that it was God telling me to stay on the righteous path so he could one day pull me up to be there with him. His hair didn't gain godly sentience just once. It continues to adjust based on King's life. When I'm doing good, the hair goes straight up, King said. Now that things are difficult, the hair has gotten a little flatter. Now, since his hair is God's aura, does that mean that God is also not doing well when King is suffering? Or God just got tired of pulling all his hairs up all the time? Only King knows the answers behind his mystery hair, but know that if he ever gets a buzz cut, something really wrong has occurred. It's been a while since King has represented any top-level talent. 
so when he got the opportunity to pitch himself to the Ukrainian boxing duo the Klitschko brothers, he pulled out all the stops. In the documentary Klitschko, they show the brothers' first meeting with King, just after Vladimir won a gold medal in 1996. King Sweet talks the boys, trying to get them to sign a clearly not great for them contract, but the brothers don't take the bait. To prove that King's a serious person and an artist more than a businessman, he sits down at his piano and begins to play. <laughs> At first, it's pretty impressive, until the Klitschkos realize that it's a player piano and King is faking the whole thing. King's choice to put on his little player piano show did not please the brothers, so they left and never went back. This brings up a very important question. How often did Don King use his piano trick to win over boxing clients? We can't imagine that was the first time. Maybe Mike Tyson couldn't resist his version of the Moonlight Sonata, and the partnership started from there. With me, was making 30 million, 40 million a fight. Now he's left me. If I'm the bad guy, why ain't he making some money? The night before Tyson got out of prison in Indiana, King convinced him to sign a long-term contract. The mistake Mike Tyson made twice. He went with Don King in 1988, and then in 1995, he went back to King. Those two choices were Tyson's responsibility. In 2005, ESPN aired a Sports Century segment that rubbed King the wrong way. So he sued the channel for $2.5 billion. The show said that King was a snake oil salesman and killed not once, but twice. They also claimed that King shorted Muhammad Ali by $1.2 million. Ali did sue King for $1.2 million, though he retracted the suit after allegedly receiving an under-the-table cash settlement from King. Though King wasn't convicted of murder, it is a documented fact that he's killed two people. That just leaves the snake oil salesman charge, which would be hard to prove since it's merely a turn of phrase. Even if false, it's not likely worth $2.5 billion in damages. After a trial and appeal, the courts felt that King could not prove that ESPN defamed him. Judge Dorian Damorgen of the Florida Appeals Court said, nothing in the record shows that ESPN purposefully made false statements about King to bolster the theme of the program or to inflict harm on King. The lesson, if you don't want people saying you're a killer, you probably shouldn't kill people. Though King's name is controversial, his work within the field of boxing is still honored. In 2013, he was inducted into the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. Former clients Mike Tyson and Larry Holmes were in the same class of inductees, though both had previously sued King for stealing their money. It seemed the Hall of Fame was willing to look beyond King's troubled past and celebrate his positive contributions to the industry. King may not be promoting the big names of boxing anymore, but that doesn't mean he's out of the game. Sports Illustrated reported that King still shows up to fights with the men in his stable, though the fights are a lot smaller. King will wave his 17 flags, shout his catchphrases, then scoot out the back door when his guy loses. It needs a little help, and we're going to rededicate, rededicate ourselves, redouble our efforts to bring boxing back to where it's supposed to be, the supreme position of all sports and entertainment, because it's man to man, el mano el mano, or woman to woman, and no one can get in between when the referee, uh, the only one can say something, but when that bell rings and them three steps you go up there, nothing is like boxing. And it's better than war because you can have a return match. The once bustling Don King Productions now resides in an unmarked building in Florida that serves as a museum to his past triumphs and few signs of future success. One of his biggest clients, Eric Molina, only made $250,000 on his WBC heavyweight championship fight, a far cry from the millions King used to rake in for his top-level clientele. The man has caused hype, excitement, and controversy to the world of boxing for years. Now, boxing has left him behind, but he still clings to his persona to get some final moments in the spotlight. 
And there you have it, my name is Harry, and thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our new channel.